I think he told us something along the lines of Arkansas is decent, but we don't know if they're ready to be the guys yet. Do you feel like a year later they could be the guys in the SEC West? Well, I think you have to define what being the guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I think it's probably the hardest challenge in the country because you're talking, you know, about maybe the most talented team in Alabama right now. But does Arkansas have a chance to absolutely compete for being top ten? Yeah, I mean, we just got done interviewing KJ, and I think you, you look at him and the talent and more weapons, you know, put around him a running game. Um, two linebackers, even though they're not middle, they sort of play like it. And, you know, you're going to have a Mike and a Will that are two of the best in the country, I think. I think Drew Sanders is going to be really good, and I think Bumper is going to be um, – I think it'll be one of the best seasons as any linebacker this year. Um, I just, you know, I think Jalen um, being healthy is massive. Um, just not just for him being a good player, but for the style, for the intensity he plays with. Um, if they can stay healthy, um, I think they can really make a run at it. Start with a big week one matchup. Um, you know, it's going to be really exciting. And I think the culture, you know, I talked about that last year a lot. Um, which I think has been fascinating to watch. I think it's the, the most impressive, most important thing that Coach Pittman has done is he's built a culture. He's built um, a group of kids that believe they can win, and it starts with that. And um, he's built a culture where you've been able to, you know, pull players from other places and get some big-time recruits and um, believe that you can upset Texas, believe that you can get big wins, you know, believe you can play with Bama. Um, there's a few plays last year in that game where if they go differently, you know, uh, I mean, you know, arguably that's one of the best performances any team made against Bama. So I think they have taken so many strides. And I, I think the question this year is, is it's not about talent. It's not about the ceiling. It is about consistency because the, the gauntlet of the SEC and especially still the West is brutal and it's staying healthy. It's Every week, it's you know for the first time since maybe six or two thousand six or seven, I guess with Mallet, and then you could say maybe ten or eleven, but um, that you're going to get everyone's best every week. Um, that's where their questions are going to come in. But I mean, I have just so much praise for this team, for Coach Pittman, for um, this their strength staff, for their coaching staff, for their leadership. Um, it's just something that's exciting to see. I mean, I think they're one of the better stories in college football, and they're one of the easier teams to root for in college football. Um, I really mean that because how they do things is, for me as a diehard fan of college football, it's really easy to root for. Tim, you mentioned K.J. Jefferson and getting yeah. to speak to him. How do you see a lot of people have talked about how he's progressed from last year to this year. How do you see a change in demeanor, what he talks about? Have you seen anything? Well, I think he's super confident. And uh, we literally just came from uh, through the rain after just uh, hanging with him. And uh, I, I said, dude, how much you weigh right now? <laughs> And he's like 237. I said, there ain't no chance. You're definitely at least 250. I mean, and I believe he's 237, but he looks like he's 250, 255. And I think there's going to be a lot of linebackers and safeties that do not want to tackle him in the fourth quarter this year. And um, so I think for KG, I think he needs to do a, a good job of being smart throughout the year. And I think there's times where he needs to put on a back brace and carry the team. And that's one of my favorite things about him um, is – is that that competitiveness that you know that different mode you go into to in a fourth quarter and in last drives you know is he has something different built in and and you know what for Arkansas to really be successful um, there's going to be four or five games in the fourth quarter where he's got to put on a back brace and carry some of that offense and you know, run over a few guys and put it in. And um, I know his favorite player is Cam Newton. And so, you know, and I don't, I'm not trying to compare him to Cam Newton. It's very hard to compare anybody to Cam Newton. But, you know, he, he'll have to, you know, in some of these games, you know, this year, A&M, LSU, Alabama, where he's going to have to make some of those plays for them to, to win some of those. And uh, it's going to be fascinating because I think they're going to be in so many of those. And now in the fourth quarter, you know, that consistency, do you get it done? Three quarterbacks in the league. 
Oh, of course you're going to ask me that. You know, I, I, I really, and I'm not trying to avoid your question. I think it's a really good question. I think it is totally open for so many people to take that, you know, that next step. I think if you look at Anthony Richardson, um, he's got the ability to be one of the best in the country. I think if you look at Will Levis, he absolutely has the ability. I think if you look at Hinden Hooker, he has the ability. Um, obviously, Bryce, you know, he's a Heisman Trophy winner. Um, KJ absolutely has that ability. Will Rogers, absolutely. So I think there's going to be a race, you know, and there's so many other guys I could name. I mean, honestly, I think this is going to be going to be one of the best years in quarterback playing a long time. And some people say, well, they're unproven. And I say, but, say the, but the difference is this group of quarterbacks right now has crazy amount of talent. Like, you know, KJ's talent, his ability to run and throw the deep ball and run like that, that's a difference maker. The you know, um, you know, Anthony, his ability, Hendon Hooker, his ability, so many of these guys, their talent level is crazy. And that's what's going to be exciting. Now, how do you stay healthy? How do you make wise decisions? And then how do you play in the fourth quarter? To me, that will be the difference maker. But every one of those guys has a chance to, to go to, you know, two, three, four, however they figure out. And, you know, until someone can sort of knock them off, I probably have Bryce as one. But I think there's a lot of guys that can you know, compete in this league at a very, very high level. You mentioned playing smart and staying healthy for KJ, but you know what it's like to both run and throw, be involved in pretty much every play. How do you know, do that? I don't know if I always did that the smartest <laughs> way, but. <laughs> for KJ though, how do, you, how do you do that the smart way? How do you know, you know, when to take a risk, but you know, you're going through the whole SEC West, you yeah, gotta stay healthy. I think it's based on discernment, decision-making, and in the moment, right? You know in our team, we gotta get it going, all right? KJ's got to know that. It's not going well. If they go the first few drives, you know, three and out, Cincinnati's got momentum. I got to make a play. I got to turn the, the tide a little bit, right? And you get it going. But if they're up 14, you know, that's also a time, okay, well, maybe I don't have to put my body on the line. Um, you know, games where they're pulling away, um, you know, but there's going to be the fourth quarters, the second halves, you know, um, especially in SEC West competition where – you know, for this offense to succeed at the highest level, he's going to have to do that. And I think that's knowing the balance and knowing the situation. And also, you know, knowing if you're being able to hand it off and get it out of your hands fast, then continue to do that. But if that's not working, all right, I, I got to know, I got to I gotta change the momentum. And he has the ability to do that. And not everybody does, you know. And it's, it's fun when you can make a decision of the will to go do that. And that's something he can. But it's also, you know, Bodies only take so much. Tim, a big come. Oh, I'm sorry. Tim, a big conversation of the off season has been uh, the loss of Traylon Burks. And what is this wide receiver room going to look like? Good for question. Arkansas? It's great. Yeah, it's a great question. Was, that's why I'm asking you. Have you seen anything? Have you been able to talk to any of those guys? Or, or what do you think KJ is going to have in in weapons this year? Um, I think he's going to have a lot of talent, and maybe um, more overall talent. You know, from a group, just athleticism. But you had someone last year that you can so count on when you need a big play, when we need to, you know, um, I mean, how many times did they have a reverse screen where they threw it to him and he's picking up 10, 15? How many times, you know, is a contested ball down the field? And he's got to be able to find that guy. Um, and you know, when you say there's a lot of talent, that also means that you're still looking for, you know, those, those X factors. And I would just be... Maybe the, the first thing I'd be looking for um, tomorrow afternoon is on the first couple third downs, who is he looking to, you know? Especially if you're getting man-to-man -man coverage, which I, I think Cincinnati is going to mix it, but I think they're going to still play a lot of man-to-man. -man. And if you're getting man-to-man, -man, who is he going to? And who is getting open in that? And then guess what? That's going to be the guy he's looking to over and over again. And, and I think, you know, it's probably one of the bigger things this year is going to make or break Arkansas season is, you know, and I would say that about multiple teams. Um, I think, you know, Kentucky's can have a run, but are their receivers going to step up? You know, and there's gonna, multiple teams in this league right now where they have a lot of pieces, but, you know, to have those guys that receiver that are a difference maker is that, you know, I can take it. It could have been a seven-yard game, but I can take it 70. That, that you know, it's going to light up the scoreboards and light up the fans, and that changes everything. Cincinnati, Cincinnati as a program has been able to kind of climb its way out of the, the East Hill Five Conference position, if you will. But here within the you know SEC bubble, if you will, what is the the, the view or the opinion of 
Cincinnati, and is there a different name recognition that goes with them now than maybe even a year or two ago? I think so. I think it depends on who you are. You know, we had the chance to, when I was at Florida to play them in a, a Sugar Bowl when they were, I think, number three in the country. And so we had a lot of respect for them. And I think there's a lot of teams that have a whole lot of respect for, for Cincinnati and making the college football playoff and competing in it. Um, you know, I, I think that the respect level is there. Um, so I think, you know, I, I think Arkansas goes in respecting them. They've gotten a lot of hype. I think that helps. Um, Coach Fickle has done a great job. Um, never want to take anything away. So I think they have a lot of respect. Um, the, you know, but the reality is, is they lost a lot of really good players and that have played a lot of football. And now you have to replace those players week one. And I think that's the hard thing for Cincinnati. I think they're going to have another good season. But to get to that same level, I mean, you know, when you're replacing players that have that good of leaders, it's just, it's really hard for any team, no matter what conference you're in.